Hey, I'm Kurt. Thanks for watching this new episode in my Introduction to AppleSoft Basic series. The topic today is special because it's a topic that was actually requested by a viewer. Thanks, White Tyler Perry. Today, I'm going to show you how easy, but also how strange it is, to use input from a joystick in your AppleSoft Basic program. We'll have a little bit of fun with it and we'll create a simple text-based drawing program. And we'll do it right here on my Apple IIe computer from 1983. So if you're ready, let's get started. First, we'll power on the computer and the monitor. And now we're going to interrupt the boot process. We're going to hit Control Reset. And that's going to tell the computer to stop looking for a disk to boot from and just give us an AppleSoft Basic prompt. From this prompt, we can write AppleSoft Basic commands. We can write full-blown AppleSoft Basic programs right there in memory, and no disk is required at all. By the way, here's a fun fact. The word AppleSoft is actually a combination of the words Apple and Microsoft. One of Apple's founders, Steve Wozniak, originally created an integer-only version of BASIC for his Apple computers. But when customers complained about the integer-only math limitation, Apple actually turned to Microsoft for help. Microsoft licensed to Apple a floating-point capable version of BASIC that could execute on the Apple processor. But that version did require a lot of work on the part of the Apple team in order to adapt it to their needs and to make it backwards compatible with Waz's integer basic. So the final product actually became the namesake of both companies. Isn't it funny how corporations who are basically mortal enemies today were close partners who worked together so many years ago? Crazy. So, in AppleSoft Basic, in order to read the value from this joystick, we're going to use the peak command. That's P-E-E-K. And the peak command simply looks or peaks at values in the computer's memory. So, just about everything that goes on inside of a computer needs to be stored somewhere in that computer's memory. And so, if you know the right memory location to look at, you can find out the different states of the joystick. And since that command just peaks at memory locations, the peak command is used for way, way more than just looking at joystick values. But that's how we're going to use it today. Let's start with the buttons on the joystick. My joystick has two different buttons. Well, actually it has three, but this orange button is the exact same button as this orange button. They send the exact same signal to the computer. We can read the values from these buttons right from the command line without even writing a program. Let's try it. So when the button is not pressed, that memory location holds the value of 127. Now, We'll peek at the value again, but this time I'll hold down the button on the joystick when I press enter. Holding the button down, enter. Now it gives us a different value, 255. That's pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like in real time by writing a program with an infinite loop to look at these values. It looks right. Let's run it and see what happens. Button number one, or button zero. Button one. Button zero. 
and one of the zero. So that's kind of cool. So what are the memory locations of these stick movements then? Well, I actually don't know that because AppleSoft made a special routine to read these analog stick values. It's called the paddle or PDL command. Control C. All right, that looks correct. Let's try it out. All right, as before, button zero, button one, and then stick zero. And stick one. Pretty cool. Okay, now we know how to read joystick and button values, and we know what those values look like and what their ranges are. Now let's create a fun little program to draw on the text screen by using the joystick. Looks good. All right, let's see what happens when we move the joystick. Up, down, left, right. We are now drawing on the screen with text using the joystick. That is pretty cool. I don't know what I just drew, but it looks a little scary. That's pretty fun, and it was super easy too. But let's spend just a little more time enhancing this program a bit. If we add a little bit of logic to our program, we can press one joystick button to draw the asterisks on the screen, and we can press the other joystick button to erase them, just like a legit drawing program. Let's do that. All right, if I hit, <coughs> hit this button, just like before in the old program, it draws the asterisk. But if I hit this button, now it is erasing the asterisk. Draw, erase. Erase, draw. Erase. It's not perfect because I can't actually tell where the cursor is on the screen unless I'm drawing the asterisk. But I'm going to leave that as an advanced exercise for you to try to solve on your own at home. 
feel free to share your final program in the comments. Now before we go, I want to spend just a couple minutes showing you my Beagle Brothers Apple software catalog. This one is from 1985, and I was a young, impressionable high school freshman that year. Good times. I love Beagle Brothers. The software that they sold in their catalogs was all relatively inexpensive. Most of their software were just small utilities in order to make your life easier. For example, like this one called FrameUp. FrameUp is a simple slideshow utility. It cost 30 bucks in 1985, which is like 75 bucks today. And apparently, FrameUp let you mix high res and low res and text slides into your slideshow. Awesome. Apparently, it was so fast that it could load a high res image from the disk to the screen in, get it, two and a half seconds. Can you imagine two and a half seconds just to load a slide to the screen? And you could advance these slides either using the keyboard or using the joystick or a paddle, or you could set a timer for automatic advancement. That's pretty crazy. This amazing utility could store 136 low resolution slides on a single floppy disk. Or are you sitting down because this utility could store a whopping 17 high res slides on the same floppy disk? Does anybody even remember ever having a slideshow that only contained 17 slides? That's pretty crazy. Things have really changed in the technology world, haven't they? Besides the software utilities that Beagle Brothers sold in their catalogs, these catalogs were always really fun to look at. They were quite humorous. For example, here on page 11, there's a little article called Where's Soft Talk? Where's Soft Talk? We don't know. They just disappeared without a word. We miss them. That was a great Apple magazine. We also miss the $5,000 we prepaid them for the two-page spread that was supposed to appear in their September issue. And Beagle Brothers catalogs were always chock full of these fun old-timey diagrams. For example, right here on page 12, there's a fun diagram showing an early disk drive. It has a universal interface, an input-output shaft, a choke, an emergency crank, a read-write head, the in-use light, a micro-speed adjustment, a flywheel, and the all-important easy open drive door. I love these catalogs. And these catalogs always had these fun little Easter egg-like programs hidden in plain sight. For example, here on page 26 is a crazy fun three-line program. Let's see what it does. Thanks, Beagle Brothers. That was amazing. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for your interest in my little video channel. And I really want to thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. 
If you have a topic that you'd like me to cover here on my channel, let me know by adding a comment below. And if you have any feedback or general corrections for me, I am completely open to that. Just add a comment below. I will read every single one of your comments, I promise. So until next time, I will see you later. Bye. One more time, and then we'll do a cut. Just like a, <laughs> I almost got through it. I need to do that again because I did a weird thing with my face.